Hello everyone and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. This is the Earth Temple. Let's beat this dungeon real quick. Are y'all ready? Uh, we gotta get over the bridge. Uh, the bubbles, the bubbles. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it. Let's let's play the song. I don't care about the bubbles. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Let's play the song. <laughs> That's kind of how it goes. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Anyway, how's everyone doing today? Comment down below um, what's been up. Comment, yeah, just let me know how y'all are doing. Let's hang out for a bit. I know I, I just ramble sometimes in these videos, and I just I talk to y'all, and obviously like that's my that's my job. That's what I'm supposed to do here. But I want to hear back from you today. In this video, it's not about me. It's about y'all. Let me know where y'all are at. Let me know what y'all are interested in. Let me know what games y'all have been playing. Let me know what movies y'all have watched. Let me know y'all's thoughts on Zelda, on the world, on the political and economic and social situation <laughs> that we're in right now. Tell me what y'all are thinking. Share with me your ideas. And in return, I will give you videos. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm so excited just to be replaying this game and the Earth Temple, and, and there's so much that has surprised me on this playthrough. Because um, I've said before that, like I've I've, um, I've also been starting my second playthrough of Tears of the Kingdom recently, and so like that's also in the context of like the back of my head, right? So it's like, and I'm bringing that into mind as I'm as I'm replaying the Wind Waker, right? And there's things about the um, like the Earth Temple. That like comparing it to some of the Tears of the Kingdom dungeons, that I go like, oh, like there's so much that this does that I like, right? That I'm like, I wish some of the Tears of the Kingdom dungeons were doing this. Like I don't mind that it's this like, you know, Mark Brown and Boss Keys calls it like a follow the path dungeon, right? Like your goal is to get to the end. You're not necessarily unraveling like a puzzle box. Um, and I love a good puzzle box dungeon. Um, but I also like that this like this idea of just going deeper and deeper underground right i think that really works and i like that through that it allows like very focused a very focused progression it's very intentional the game developers are able to put you on a very specific path i think that that's really meaningful um that goes a long way it's like you're always going to face the puzzles pretty much in the same direct uh, order right which means that like playthroughs are not very different from playthrough to playthrough uh, but it also means that like you'll be challenged in the same way and the developers can can design that challenge with specifics in mind. And I think that that goes a long way as well. And it's just like, to me, like this is still engaging. Like I've played this game tons and tons of times, but like, I still have fun. Right. And like, this is like this dungeon, like is taking a while to complete. It's probably going to be what, like, um, I mean, what, like I, I, this is the third video that I've done on the earth temple. So it's like, in theory, that's like 60 minutes, right? Like, with 20 minutes each, give or take. Uh, somewhere in between 45 and, and an hour, right? Which is longer than, like, the Tears of the Kingdom's dungeons uh, on a replay, right? Like, obviously, it's like dungeons are different when you're figuring them out for the first time. But, like, I'm replaying the, the Earth Temple. And in Tears of the Kingdom, I was replaying, like, the Water Temple. Uh, and, like, the Lightning Temple takes a little bit more time to complete, even on a replay, that's kind of what I found is that there were still things where I was like, oh, I don't exactly know where to go yet. Um, you know, and that's that's one thing. But can I check my map? Do I have a map, dungeon map yet? Let's check some things. Do I go right or left? I think I want to go left first, right? Or does it even really matter? Does it even really matter? Who's to say? But, like, um, like the Water Temple really disappointed me in Tears of the Kingdom to replay because it's something that I just, like, breezed through, right? Um, like, it was just, it was, like, there's just not that much to it. It's very easy, does not take that much time. And I was like, oh, like, this is just, like, not super engaging to replay. There's no interest in, like, you know, delving back into, like, an interesting location. Um, I enjoy, like, the lead-up to the dungeon, going into, like, the waterworks. And if you include that as part of the dungeon, you could. To me, that's just, like... You know, it's build up to it. It's part of the quest, but it's not, like, a part of the dungeon, right? So I guess, like, if you include that, maybe that's that's different and does extend the length of time that it takes from beginning to end, in theory. But, like, with the dungeon itself, 
Like the water temple is just like you show up, you do the, the terminals. They're not that tough. Um, and then you're done. Right. And it's like, I don't know, like I'm okay if, if Zelda's easy, like here I am playing wind waker. Like this is a game very available for kids. Like, um, uh, difficulty wise, like this wind waker is not a hard game. Um, there are some challenging puzzles, I think, for, for a kid, especially for a first-time player, but, like, it, it's it's still pretty easy. But, yeah, like, I still find it more engaging. Like, I find the Earth Temple more engaging than Tears of the Kingdom's Water Temple. And I think that's tough, right? Because there's so much I love about the new dungeons, and I love Tears of the Kingdom. And I think, as a whole, there's things that it does that iterates on ideas that I like from other Zelda games and from The Wind Waker and successfully makes some of them more interesting you know, iterating on exploration and things you find in the overworld and all of its designs with its physics and its combat. Um, it takes all of the rhythm-based, like, ideas of the Wind Waker's combat, because there is a rhythm, right, to it, right? Like, slash, 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 critical slash, right? Like, some of that, right? Um, and it just, like, ups the ante and makes it more interesting and develops it with fuse and all the elemental arrows that you have. Um, and it just pushes things further. In general, Tears of the Kingdom, I think, is a successful iteration on what I love about um, Wind Waker and other Zelda games, right? Like, I, I, I think so. But then there's, like, individual things that I'm like, oh, like, this is individually worse. And, like, just, like, not all of the temples of Tears of the Kingdom are bangers. And that's the thing. Um, that is the thing that is just undeniable. And I, I feel bad saying that, because its temples are better than Breath of the Wild, right? They're unique locations. That goes a long way. But they're still, like, just... Like, I'm not a fan of, like, the terminal-based design. I didn't mind it in Breath of the Wild when it had, like, the puzzle box-style dungeons. And I'm like, oh, like, it's always interesting to interact with the dungeons because, like, just fundamentally, it's, like, it's going to be a little different each time you play, how you choose to flip the, the dungeon and rotate different things. And I'm like, that's interesting to play with. And I'm okay with that terminal-based layout because of how experimental things were. But Tears of the Kingdom is not necessarily... It's, it keeps the terminal system, but removes, like, the puzzle box. So I'm like, well, then, you know, with that, it's like, well, what's, what's the point, right? Um, and I don't know. Like, I think terminals in theory are not a bad idea of, like, giving you different objectives to complete throughout the dungeon. And I think, like, with a more complex dungeon, that's not a bad thing. I don't really mind it with, like, the Wind Temple in, Breath, um, in Tears of the Kingdom or the Lightning Temple. I think those, like, lead to more focused like gameplay as you have to solve specific puzzles and are routed throughout a space um like that i think that's a little better but like in the water temple especially i'm like 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 come on it's just like you just go around like it's it's all essentially one room and there's no un like you're not um uh figuring out or like solving this puzzle with the dungeon you're just like completing individual little things that are all pretty easy easier than most of the shrines as well and the shrines of tears of the kingdom are easy and i don't have an issue with difficulty like i said i just want to make that clear because i'm making a big deal about the difficulty and here i am playing wind waker and it's not a hard game so i just want to make that clear i don't care about the difficulty but i do think like is the dungeon engaging right that's different that's different from saying is it hard or easy and i think just like for the water temple it's not super engaging and i think that's what i'm talking about um and i don't know maybe it's hard to like describe the difference between like difficulty and engagement but i think that's something that like intuitively like i think you know right um so i don't know i, I I'm, I'm curious as to know y'all's thoughts on that but but anyway i don't know i don't know i've been rambling a lot about tears of the kingdom but i also think that like i'm interested in discussing that i do want to do a dedicated video talking about my tears of the kingdom thoughts on a second playthrough because there's things that like i feel differently about it on a second playthrough um and like i didn't feel that strongly about the water temple until I replayed it, and I'm like, like, oh, this is just a breeze. So, anyway. Anyway, perspective. Anyway. I love these pillars, man. These are super simple geometrically, but, like, the textures go a long way and still make them interesting to look at. I don't know, like, there, there's so much, like, obviously, if y'all don't know, on this channel, I run um, a 3D modeling fan art project called Wind Waker Unflooded, where I'm 3D modeling the land of Hyrule as it could have existed within the world and art style of the Wind Waker. <laughs> um... And so, like, I've, I'm part of why I'm replaying this game is to study the way in which it, um, like, utilizes its textures and its modeling, um, like, conventions. 
the way in which like how simple or high po- how poly high poly or low poly are its models and how um what are the world building decisions what does the game text present as lore what does the environmental storytelling present as lore and trying to pay attention to all that stuff and connecting the dots and figuring out what does wind waker have to say about what its version of hyrule would have been like because it leaves a lot of clues but it's also just been interesting to look at its 3d modeling conventions and see and just like be reminded of how like it's it's models are not like anything too complex like it's super approachable and i really respect that and appreciate that and i think it's still beautiful even given that and i think it's just a great lesson in that like um a 3d model is not like it doesn't need to be high poly to be like great you know like that's not what it needs um you can have like really like good storytelling efficiency and like show everything you need to show within like this is just like a cube cut out of a room this is all this is like look at this little space this little alcove that's just well it's not technically a cube it's like the inverse of a cube but like you know what i'm saying like geometrically like like that's super simple um and i think there's just there's a lesson there right the like and i think that it's even more powerful to show how much you can do with a little can you achieve a lot of storytelling with a little um with not a super complex model right and i just i I think that's really inspiring um and it's really like like it's it's a good message as someone that like i don't have the most powerful computer right like i'm not able to even run like super high poly models right like there's a limit to processing power and it's like well processing power is not what it takes to make something good right um What's over here? There's a chest over here, and I always forget what's in it, but... Oh, do I need to bring Medley over? Is it worth it? It's just like a sea chart or something, right? Like, is that worth it? Do I need to? Like, do I, like, do I need to, though? You know what I'm saying? Or no, that was the door. There's a chest over here. That's the door out. Excuse me. The chest is over here. Excuse me. Well, let me go ahead and get this chest, and then I'll bring Medley to the door. Excuse me. I don't know how to read my map. Excuse me just a red ruby well that's not worth it pleasant surprise come on like i can get that in like two daylight cycles of windfall island right um i don't know if that's my go-to way of farming rubies obviously there's a lot of mini games that like that i didn't know about like the canon mini game on um what is it uh uh what is it called the um not dueling peaks like the um spectacle isle excuse me spectacle isle um like there's that mini game I think is a good way of farming rubies that like I didn't really realize until like my last playthrough of the game. Um do, do, oh, oh. <laughs> excuse me. But yeah, like there like before that I was just like using like the sun song on Windfall Island and just or not the the song of passing, right? Um essentially the sun song. Um just like to reset its pots. And because it has a bunch of pots hidden throughout the, the island and bushes that give you like five rubies each. Um, bloopies, as we like to call them, right? In the business. Um, but yeah, anyway. Anyway, red rubies are no big deal. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Like, come on. Now, I mean, rubies are like essential for the end game. So I guess like I'm appreciative of it because like you do need rubies and every little bit counts. So maybe I should be grateful. Maybe I should be thankful. But I don't feel grateful, do I? And that's okay. That's okay. But I didn't waste any time. It was just... <laughs> it was like the the shortest of uh, diversions. So I'm not going to complain. Ooh, here we go. Y'all ready? Here we go. We're going... We're going down. Down, down to Goblin Town. Anyway. Like, I love this, too. I mean, look at this. Is this a repeating texture? Or is it a little different for each, like... Um, thing like no i think that's just totally just a repeating texture that's just tiled throughout the wall um like super simple right super simple and yet like it works um i don't know like just like i think the point is you can do a lot with a little um there's power there and just like i don't know like i think that's just really cool because like it with like very simple models and textures it creates this whole world and as a kid it's like i felt like this world was huge um right and like i was really impressed by it and i still am like i buy into the fantasy and the world building and i'm still immersed playing it now even though i can 
look at it, and I can go like, oh, I can understand what it would take to create that space in a 3D model. And I think like when I first started to think like that, it kind of took me out and started to break the immersion. Because then it's like I'm not seeing the world anymore. I'm seeing polygons. And I'm like, oh, no, like, am I ruining my immersion? But it's like, no, like, now I'm like, I have a greater appreciation for it. And it's like, because I can see the world as polygons, it's like, I understand, well, what does it take to create, you know, to bring imagination to life within the scope of the technical side? And I appreciate it more now. You know what I'm saying? And, and I just like, it gives me a greater appreciation for the models and texturing of the Wind Waker to have done my 3D modeling fan, fan art project. And, you know, it's like I still believe that you can, like, like I haven't lost the imagination of it just because I'm also immersed in the technical side. Um, right? And I, th I think that's true for most people that are immersed in the technical side of, of these these childhood games, right? And I know some people that, like, don't understand speedrunning at first because they're like, well, like, the game is meant to be played one way, and I feel like if I start to do glitches, then it breaks the game, and I'm like, well, it's not what I'm experience anymore like I love this game for its main quest why would I want to detract from the thing that I love and like speed through it and it's like well that's not why they do it they they're playing the game like that because they love it because they want to like find a new challenge for themselves right like you know recontextualize this game that they love that they've already played and experience it in a new way that's cool you know so, I don't know, like, I really appreciate and respect the art of speedrunning. I watch a lot of, like, Mario 64 speedruns. I, like, I watch a lot of, like, Simply. Um, that's, the, that's one of the main things that I watch, speedrunning-wise. Um, but, like, Zelda speedruns are great. Linkus watching his stuff is great. Always very interesting. Um, there's so many tricks. And, like, Wind Waker especially is something that, like, like, oh, man, I don't know if I'll ever get into Wind Waker speedrunning. I think that's something eventually, like, as, like, a challenge to myself, I would enjoy, like for a specific game, right? Just to, like, um, to, like, try, like, a speed run. And not to, like, be competitive about it, but just, like, to see, like, oh, can I learn some glitches? Um, but, and I don't know, like, maybe Wind Waker, like, maybe, like, it's modern, like, competitive strats aren't for me. I'd be interested in, like, maybe trying some old strats, but I also don't know, because there's stuff that, like, seems too challenging that I'm, like, I don't even know if those are, like, worth it, right? Like, whether it's super swims or, or, like, zombie hovering or, uh, barrier skip. I'm like this. This actually does like seem like there's a pretty high barrier of entry skill wise, um, and so I don't know. But like I'd be interested in like learning a couple of glitches, right? Like figuring out are there things that I can like you know as a someone who's relatively a noob, are there new ways to to experience the game, right? Are there like glitches that are accessible? And I don't know. Like I think that that could be interesting to figure out for a um, for a game. Maybe not this game. Maybe not Ocarina of Time. Maybe not Mario 64. Um, I don't know, like, Mario 64, I think, would be fun. I just, I don't have a copy right now that, like, isn't, um, like, patched, right? Like, I, I've been playing it on 3D, uh, 3D Mario All-Stars. Um, I think, like, the Nintendo Switch Online version is also the patched version with long jumps. Um, if it's not, that could change things, and I think that, but, like, I'm pretty sure it still is. Um, I'm pretty sure. Let's see, what do I need to do? What am I missing? Um... This is going there. I need to take control of Medley. It's time. Medley, it is time to fulfill your duty. Um, swing that harp around. Anyway, took a sip of water. A fella's got to stay hydrated. That's so important. Never underestimate the power of hydration. Anyway, y'all know that. Y'all know that, right? Uh, is it going? Is it going? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's see. Now let's turn Medley around so I can get this chest. Um, focus the beam of light. Do, 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 we're so close. Focus it. Focus, focus, focus. Focus, hocus, pocus, focus. Hocus, pocus, super focused. There it goes. Whew. I don't know why that was so tough. Why was it so hard? Why? Why? For what reason? For what reason must I must I waste my time? I'm going to go ahead and move Medley. I think, does she need to be up here? I actually don't even know. Maybe not even. Um, I'm not sure where she's needed next. So, we'll figure that out. And I think this, this is like a really interesting puzzle because it's something that like, as you complete it, 
like it does tell you how to do it in a way because you can go from like mirror to mirror and figure things out but it's like i don't keep the whole puzzle in my head right um and i think it's still fun to solve because of that because i'm still like not exactly sure like well what is my next step right and but it is like a step-by-step puzzle that like is not hard to complete as long as you're paying attention to the room and are aware aware of your surroundings and can kind of like figure out what to do next like the puzzle does kind of like tell you how to do it um but like i think it's still engaging because like it is something that like you can't just like rush into the room and like quickly do it right and you don't even necessarily know exactly how to make the solution happen there is something that like i think like as an adult like i do wish that like it didn't have like the texture on the ground so, so that like you know exactly where to place the mirror like i think this would be like a compelling puzzle still for returning players and adults like without those things on the ground right and i guess like if i really wanted to i could do a custom texture pack to remove them <laughs> right because i think they're just a texture um so in theory that's something like with emulation like i'm like oh if that really bothers me and i want extra challenge then i could figure that out um right like just like just the added bonus of like not knowing exactly where to put it. Like, I think there is some geometric difference. Like, there's a little bit of a dip there as well. But, like, that's something that, like, could be a little bit harder. But I don't even know if that would make a difference. Because um, you're just pushing it to the end of these slidery, sliding, like, tileable areas anyway. Um, I don't know. Like, there's no question, like, as soon as you approach each step, how exactly to fulfill it. Um, but still, like, I, I think, like, this is a really cool puzzle just because it's, like, it's a puzzle that takes a lot of steps to solve. So it's, like, fundamentally, like, I think it's interesting to, like, um, to, like, slowly complete it along the way, right? Like, I think that's still interesting every time to, like, see it all come together. Um, and I do really appreciate, like, I, I wish the Lightning Temple in Tears of the Kingdom had something like this. But it does have, like, a lot of, like, little puzzles that are similar, even if they're not quite on the same scale. Um, and I appreciate that. Like, I, I think it gets close to capturing the magic of it. And it's something that is a little bit tougher because, like, it doesn't have those, like, spots on the ground where you know exactly where to push things, right? Um, so, like, it offers that. So I, I do appreciate the Lightning Temple. I know, like, sometimes I dog on the Tears of the Kingdom dungeons, but I want to make it clear that, like, there, there's places where I'm like, oh, like, that does exactly what I would want out of its dungeon. So I, I'm really glad that, like, the Beams of Light returned. Like, to me, the Lightning Temple feels like a great homage to the Earth Temple, right? You have your companion character, you have the the beams of light and the mirror shields and, you know, like trying to figure out how to reflect those. Um, and there's Gibdos, which are clearly like, you know, that game's version of Redeads. And Gibdos obviously like exist throughout the Zelda series before. And like, I'm not sure if they've ever been really their own enemy or if it's just like the Redead, but with like extra steps, like just a little bit more mummified. Um, I, I'm not sure. Comment down below. Do you think Gibdos are entirely separate or just a renamed version of a redead like in a specific context right um because i think there are zelda enemies like that right it's like they have their own name not because they're totally different but just because they're a variation um but comment down below comment down comment down below that's all i ask i just want i want to interact with my fans with my viewers with my audience that's why i do this 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 channel i want y'all to know that that like part of what i love about like the youtube format for Wind Waker Unflooded is that, like, it gets to be, like, a community, right? Um, like, because uh, otherwise, I don't know, like, I, I just found, like, with the video format where I can make it really intimate and show y'all the process for videos and talk to y'all, it's, like, that's a lot more intimate than just, like, an Instagram post or a Twitter post where, like, I'm just updating you on the progress of the project because that's how I started, right? I just, like, did some pics on Instagram and and TikTok and videos, like little clips, but like it wasn't very intimate or personal. And I think like this channel started to grow as soon as I talked to the audience and shared my passion with y'all through my voice, right? And I don't know, like sometimes I feel like my voiceover isn't always super interesting and I repeat myself and I don't know, I've gotten comments like making me aware of that. And so I try to make the, the commentary interesting every time and, and talk about things that I think are interesting. Um, you know, even if I repeat myself still every now and then, like I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do my best to make interesting content for y'all. So I'm aware of that. But I do think like this this channel only started to grow when I did that, when I made it personal, right? And made more content that was like from my perspective. And like, I think like gave y'all like, I don't know, like created a, com a community like with me as a creator where you can really understand 
who I am. To me, like, that's my analysis of, like, what made this channel grow. Oh, I see what I have to do. Oh, oh. See, like, look at that. Like, this puzzle's still stumping me all these years later. I just had to figure out exactly um, how to do it. Is that going to be good enough? Let's try it. Let's try it. I totally forgot that I had to, like, do it like this. Um, I had to use both characters to reflect light. How intriguing. How intrig how how interesting that is. Hmm, quite the quite the intriguing puzzle. Hmm, quite the quite the quite the interesting conundrum. Excuse me. Is it gonna okay there it goes. I don't know why that took forever. Um let's beat the dungeon in this video. Let's let's do it. I don't know that that may that may make the video longer than some of my typical videos. I don't know, it might still be another like 10, 15 minutes. I don't know how long it's gonna take. I think we're close, right? Because after this is the boss key, right? Um, I think, I think, I'm a think, I'm, bro thinks he's the thinker, um, but I still have to do this puzzle, and I don't know, I appreciate that, like, I appreciate that this is, like, I don't know, like, I, I can talk about, like, how this puzzle is, like, not hard once you get going, but I do appreciate that it takes time, and, like, it asks you to be patient with it, and, like, slowly unravel the mystery, and there are, like, little micro challenges where you're, like, oh, I have to use both characters in order to reflect light, like, that's nice, like, I think there are successful iterations on, like, the puzzle getting more complex as you go. And it's not anything crazy, but it is, like, satisfying. It's always satisfying to complete, um, even replaying it as an, as an adult, right? Um, and I love these, like, scorpion um, or crabs. I think they're, like, it's hard to tell, right? I think they're meant to be scorpions. Um, but, like, yeah, I think, yeah, they're definitely scorpions. But, like, those mirrors, like, that's great, right? Um, that is... Very nice. Very nice. Which is why, like, I think it's so clear that this location is, like, connected to, like, you know, to um, the desert people. Even though it, I don't think it's in the desert canonically, um, as far as, like, the map goes. But I think, like, obviously this is from the culture of a people like the Gerudo, right? Um, I don't know. I kind of see it as being, like, an ancient Gerudo uh, temple. Uh, but, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know that there's really any way to confirm that. Um... I don't know if there's any writing, like, in the temple to, like, compare it to. Um, like, what's this on the wall? Like, is there anything here we can we can glean any lore information from? Like, I don't know. I don't know. You could make the argument that some of those symbols look like owls. Ooh, Zonai reference? Is it Zonai? Is it Zonai? Uh, that's something I loved about, like, the Tears of the Kingdom theories as soon as it came out and everyone was like, oh, like, all these other ruins in the games, like, maybe there's Zonai too. And, like, I, I'm, I'm not making fun of that. Like, I think that's that's cool, right? Because there are ways in which you go, like, oh, now that we have a name for this ancient civilization, we know what they look like, we know some of their iconography, you can make connections to different, like, ruins from other games. And uh, I think that's really cool to make those connections. Um, and I don't know. Like, I think Tears of the Kingdom, like, I know a lot of theorists and YouTube channels that have kind of given up on figuring things out because they're like, well, like, there's not... Like, I can't figure out where it exists in the timeline. I can't really figure out, like, you know, like, how do the Zonai, like, they just exist in this game. Like, does that really impact the lore if it only exists in this game? Um, and I'm like, no, like, I think there are connections to make. And a lot of Zelda games have discussions about, like, um, sky people and a race of people closer to the gods than the Hylians. So, like, let's discuss that. Let's unpack that. Let's make those connections. Um, and it's like, the Zelda series, I think, in many ways, like, each entry is individual. But I also think, like, there's a lot of things that, like, you can see a lot of connections. And maybe it's not necessarily, like, one for one, but obviously, like, the depths are meant to be, like, the depths in Tears of the, Tears of the Kingdom. They are the inverted geography of the overworld of Hyrule. So they're meant to clearly be, like, a dark world, right? An inverse of Hyrule. Even though that doesn't exist in the same way that, like, the Sacred Realm does... Um, or the Twilight Realm, or some of these other mirror dimensions. It's not quite the same, but you can compare it to those, right? And so, I don't know, like, I wonder, because, like, the depths are a place with spirits, and I, I do wonder, like, I think the game presents it as, this, as if they could be the literal caves underneath Hyrule, but, like, from what you can see about, like, the ghosts, right, in inside of it, right? Like, it seems clear to me that, like, it is meant to be analogous to like this dark world right with roaming spirits with the afterlife there it, this is a realm where you see this the statue right 
um, this dark goddess dealing in life and death, right? Um, the horned statue, right? Um, or not the horned statue, but like the, the statue with four eyes, right? Um, which seems to be maybe of an offshoot of that. Who's to say? Who's to say? Who's to say? I don't know. I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. But it does seem to me that like the depths are, and maybe, maybe they're supposed to be both a literal place and the underworld. Um, a lot of ancient cultures discussed um, their, their underworld in the context of being a literal place. Like Mount Olympus, like that's a real mountain, right? So it's like the Greeks, like in their mythology, talked about heaven as if it were like in a real place, right? And so it's like it's both metaphysical and real within the scope of Hyrule. And so I don't know, like I think you can talk about the depths in a similar way. I don't think that the Sky Islands exist as the inverse of that, but thematically I think it works. But like I do think the depths are more clearly related to like a spiritual underworld, um, which I think is really interesting, right? Um, even though like they seem to be literal caves, but it's like I guess like that's the question, like because there's all these holes that exist, like portals that open up, and I think in a way they are portals because there's things that like just don't make sense geographically if you think about the depths as being caves, right? Like, in a way, it makes sense, but, like, I think that they're, like, I don't, I, to me, my current theory is that, like, they, they aren't the literal caves underneath Hyrule, right? I think there, there is something more metaphysical. Like, I think they exist physically in the map after the portals opened up, but it's something that, like, prior to those portals opening up, I say portals, like chasms, right? Like, prior to that, like, the depths would have been, like, Hyrule would have had a completely different, like, you know, like, it, it would not have had the depths underground. Like, I don't think the depths always existed, literally. Um, but I don't know. Like, that's just, that's where I land right now. That's my own interpretation. And that's a whole video. Like, what are the depths in Tears of the Kingdom, and how does that relate to the, like, spiritual ramifications of Hyrule and, like, some of the conclusions you can draw about like the underworld and how it exists. Um, Cause that's always something that's been interesting, right? Like the sacred realm, like the realm of the gods. Also the dark world is something that can be corruptible, but it's something that like exists like physically, right? And you can be sealed between dimensions, but like those dimensions are real places that you can be transported to that can be connected to. Um, they're places you can traverse between, you know, that mortals can traverse between still. Right. I think that that's interesting. There's spiritual properties in a physical world. And I think there's just like, that's part of what's interesting about Zelda lore, right? Is that like, it's a world with spiritual realities inside of its world. Like where it's not just, is there the physical and the spiritual and they never interact? Like, no, like they, there is the Triforce, the manifestation of the power of the gods, right? The world was like, the Triforce was, you know, created as a result of the world's creation. And so through the power of the Triforce is the power of all that is possible through creation and through it the world is recreated um just like it's it's powerful it's the power of the gods and so much of zelda's conflict is about the power of the gods and that power is real and real in the world of the story so i guess just like i don't know like i appreciate that like within the like scope of zelda's religion it's something that like like the goddesses are a real power in the world and, like, I don't know, I think it's cool just, like, how how serious that is for the storytelling of the series. Um, I appreciate that. I don't know. Like, I'm a religious person. Like, you know, I'm like, my faith is important to me. Um, and so I, I guess just, like, I appreciate that, like, it's something that is really important for this series, right? Um, so I, I don't know. I just, I, I appreciate that because, I don't know, I, th I think that's something that, like, I think we can still tell stories about that. And I appreciate, like, Star Wars coming out being mainstream and, like, having, like, interesting discussions about, like, you know, like, it, it has its own conclusions about faith and uses its, its mythology to, like, pose certain points, right? And I think that's part of why people connect with it, right? And it is kind of like a, um, like a, um, how, how do I put it? Like, like I, I don't think, like, Star Wars is trying to, like, be religious propaganda or convert people, but I do think, like, it is a story about faith, right? Like, I don't think it's, like, an advocate for a specific religion, 
But I do think like George Lucas is saying something about spirituality that I really appreciate. Um, and like, you're obviously supposed to like, you know, read between the lines and think about like, well, what does it mean? You know, for, for like Han Solo to, to doubt the existence of it. And for, um, you know, other Imperial officers to doubt Vader's like the power of the force when Vader brings it up, but like, no, like it is powerful. Right. And it is real and worth believing, believing in. Right. Um, right. It is something that like, that unites us all. Right. And I think like, that's just cool about the subtext of star Wars is like, ultimately like in this world where there's a political, like, you know, like, um, how, how do I put this? Like where there is, um, you know, like the evil empire, right? Um, the situation where the people are oppressed that like, it is through faith that, um, that that is like the balance is restored. Right. It is through like, and I don't know. It's like faith is something that like, doesn't care about like, are you rich? Like, anyway, I think my uh, video cut me off, but we're in the boss fight. Let's go. Wish me luck. I'm going to try to, I know this video has been a longer one. I'm just going to call that my treat. I'm not going to be doing this for too much longer. I think the video will be done after the boss fight. But I just want to do, um, I don't know, just thank you all for watching. Uh, this is this is great. Um, I don't know, it's like, I, I love this boss fight. It's super creative. Um, the bowling, like, sound effect is great. I don't know, man. Shout out to Jalhalla. Um, I don't know. I'm a simple man. You show me boss that is just a giant version of thing you already fought. I'm still interested. I'm still, I'm still listening, you know what I'm saying? Interesting. That's lore. That means, all right, all these little enemies, nah, that gives them like a relationship with something bigger than themselves. That's interesting. But anyway, thank you for listening to me ramble about like Star Wars and all that. I guess, I, yeah, I was just saying that like, I think it's cool that like the force is non, it doesn't discriminate, right? It can choose, you know, Luke Skywalker from the desert planet, you know, not just an ordinary person, but someone who's, you know, who's poor on the other side of the galaxy, right? Who doesn't have much. Um, and yet he's chosen for great things, um, right? He's the one that gets to defeat the Death Star. Oh, come on, man. That's not what I was trying to lift. Come on, man. But, like, that's the power, right? That's the power in the Force. Anyway, let's get, let's get this monster. Let's destroy it. Destroy it! Here we go. I'm trying to go ham on these mo the mofo. Can I say mofo on this channel? Can I say that? That's not a curse word, right? Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, I try not to curse on this channel. I don't think I have. If, if something slips out by accident, let me know. Um, keep me accountable. But I'm trying not to. Um, I'm trying to keep this, uh, this you know, all ages friendly, right? I want this to be a place of positivity. And really, that's the goal. No matter what I say, it is important. You know, I talk about community. And that's the, that's the thing. Is I want this to be a place where we celebrate community and creativity and share our love for Zelda and our you know, I know I know so many of us are so passionate and care so much about the world building of, of Hyrule and and just love what, what Zelda represents and I, I, I love that. I love whenever I read comments and I know that I'm like, oh like y'all are in it deep too. Like <laughs> like we can talk about the lore and like, you know, we'll we'll like we'll get into it deep. I love that. I love whenever I read a comment and I just know like all right, like that's uh like the people that are on this channel is like y y'all are in it. I love that. I love that. Because I'm in it too. I love Zelda. I love this series. Um, it means a lot to me. And, like, whenever I do Wind Waker Unflooded videos, whenever I model um, my map, right, I try to really get it right. Um, and obviously, like, it's always within the scope of my own perspective, my own creativity. I have my own takes about things, and I think that that's okay. I think it's okay that it's always, like, it's up to me to just kind of decide, like, what theories do I buy into, what theories do I reject, and that's always a part of the decision, and that's okay. Uh, but it is something that, like, I do, like, really try to, to, to do it right, you know, and I want to do right by the fans, by the creators, you know, and, you know, have it feel like if there was, it's not, here's what Wind Waker's version of Hyrule would have been if Wind Waker had Hyrule, because I'm pulling from other games, I'm pulling, like, from things that didn't exist yet, from Breath of the Wild's version of Hyrule, from Ocarina, not, I mean, Ocarina of Time already existed, but from Breath of the Wild, from Tears of the Kingdom, from Twilight Princess, from Skyward Sword, games that were not out yet, right? So it's like, I, and I think it's okay to, because Hyrule is all one world. It's okay to pull details from other games, as long as it, like, kind of makes sense lore-wise, right? Um, I'm okay if there's a little bit of creative liberty within that, but it, I, I'm trying to make it kind of make sense, right? Um, but anyway, anyway, I bring that all up just because I just, I thank you for everyone that cares and 
Um, I don't know if anyone's watching this video, then I know that y'all are y'all are really into it. So I appreciate it. Um, I, I hope y'all are enjoying these gameplay videos. I've really enjoyed replaying Wind Waker. It's a game that means so much to me, of course. Um, it's been a while since I've done a playthrough, so it's just really really refreshing to kind of like ground myself in it again. So many things change from from year to year. I've changed. I'm not the same person I was a year ago. And Wind Waker is something that like kind of grounds me in all these things that I love about Zelda and about this game. And it's nice to return to it. And it's still just as beautiful as it ever was. Like, I think this is a beautiful game, not just graphically, artistically, but in everything it has to express and say about philosophy and, and spirituality and history. And I, I, I don't know, like, I think that it's just, it is beautiful. And I really appreciate that. And now we have defeated the force of evil, Jahala, spirit of the earth temple. And it is, the world is, we saved the world, guys. We did it. We did it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, yo. Link, 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 link. We did it. Yeah. Behold. We did it. Let's get that heart container real quick. This is not a three heart run. I want to do a three heart run eventually. I don't know that I've ever 100%ed or like completed at least the main quest of Wind Waker with a three heart run. I don't know how far I've gotten. So I'd like to I'd like to do that at some point. Let me know if y'all are enjoying these gameplay videos. I'll I'll keep doing it on my on my channel. I don't know like this like this aspect ratio like I thought it'd be fun to like present the videos in the same aspect ratio of the game. Let me know if that's tripping y'all up. Like if I keep doing gameplay videos, I might like you know, still render it in like 1080p, like widescreen, and just add a border to the video to make it a little more stylized. Um, that could be the move, just to like give the videos a little more stylization and fill out the screen. I just thought it'd be fun to like make it feel more retro, um, just because the game is like in that four by three aspect ratio. But I don't know. That's just kind of where I'm at right now. That's something that may change over time because I'm enjoying these gameplay videos. I definitely want to do Twilight Princess on the channel. Um, like, I know this is a Wind Waker-focused channel, but, um, um, but I, I, I just, I, I would like to, I would like to do more. I would like to share more Zelda experiences with you. Um, that's just where I'm at. But, anyway, comment down below what other Zelda games you'd be interested in seeing me play on this channel. Any notes that y'all have, things that y'all want to see for future, uh, future videos. Um, I pay attention to y'all's feedback, and I want y'all to know I really cherish it. I'm really thankful for the community and what y'all have to say, and that that matters to me. Um, that that matters. So I want y'all to hear that. So, I guess just without further ado, we're gonna get through this cutscene. I love this cutscene too. This music. Um, look up the cutscene on your own time and listen to the music. Listen to the soundtrack. Um, so yeah, that, that's my recommendation. Enjoy the Wind Waker. Enjoy what it has in store. This is a longer video, but thank you for joining me along for the ride. Um, I just, I really wanted to, I guess I could have split this up probably into two videos. And maybe I will in the edit. What if I do that in the edit? That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. What if I did that? Who's stopping me? Like, what if I do that, though? Like, what if? Like, what if that's actually the way to do it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I might contemplate that. If you're, like, asking and you're like, Joe, like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I might have split up the video in the edit. We'll see. Um, I might not. But I have that option. I have that option. I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm going to do. And that's okay. I don't have to know. But future Joe will know. But anyway, we have restored uh, power to the Master Sword just a little bit. There is but one last step before it becomes the true Master Sword once again. We did it, folks. We did it. Joe, the power to repel evil is not yet fully awakened. Oh, yeah? Do you mean it? To complete the awakening of the Master Sword... You must go to the Wind Temple for one more prayer. I might do that. Now, Joe, step into the light behind you and return to the surface. Your next duty is to find the Sage of the Wind Temple. I will remain here and continue to pray. You must hurry. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I'm, I'm going to try so hard. It might be another month. We'll see. And Joe. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Um... About Prince Kamali. Please watch over him for me. Man. Man. That hits hard. She's a whole world away from Prince Kamali. On the other side of the map and below the ocean. Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. Man. Thank you. Without further ado, though. 
is that it for the video? Is there any, is there any other cutscenes? I, I want to get through all the cutscenes, y'all. I'm just I'm attentive to this th these things, right? I think we're free. All right, everyone, y'all know how it goes. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you all so much for for all that you do. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. For now, I'll let you go. As always, you can support me as a creator by becoming a member on Patreon. There you'll get access to all kinds of exclusive behind-the-scenes content like in-progress outlines, scripts, storyboards, rough cuts, and even soundtracks for my newest films. By becoming a member, you'll also be thanked in the credits for any film I finish during your membership. You can also support me by streaming my music. I compose all of the scores for my own short films, and you can listen to those soundtracks on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you listen to music. Just look up Joe Kendrick. That's J-O-E-K-E-N-D-R-I-C-K. Y'all have a wonderful day, and without further ado, I'll let you go.